Hey guys, John and Wendy Williams here with the Short Term Rental Authority, here to help make you the best operator ever. And today we are going to talk about how to fund your initial investment, because we get asked this question all the time. All the time. Yes. So what we're going to be talking about is we will talk about exactly what that means, and we will talk about what that cost is. So we'll give you some numbers. We'll talk about what we did and, and how we funded our business in the beginning. And then we'll talk about some other other ways to fund your business that we've learned since then, since we got started operating. And then we'll talk about at the very end, what if you are purchasing the property? Because a lot of people do that. Yeah, like if you if you saw the title of this podcast, you might be thinking, how do I buy the property? Right. And that's not what we're actually talking about at the beginning. We're talking about, okay, I have the property. Now what? What's the what's the setup cost for the, the short-term rental side of it? And I think that applies whether you bought it or whether you rent it or w however you acquire it right. is the end of the conversation. What we're actually talking about is how do you set it up and what's the cost for that and how do you fund that piece? Mm-hmm. Right. So, so let's talk about that. What, what are we talking about when, when we say, <laughs> how much does it cost or how did you get started? How did you fund it? And, and what does that mean? What are you actually funding? Yeah. I say, I want to say furniture is an obvious one. So right. you've got to buy furniture in our system that we teach. You, you need a security system. And when we encourage you to buy that equipment, but it, you could finance it, right? It could be an operational expense. It might not be a setup expense. You do need, however, you do need those initial supplies. So, you, so you're gonna have to do toilet paper, you're gonna have to do uh, K-cups, you're gonna have to do sugar, you have to do, you know, what, whatever those consumables are, you know, stockpile of those, at least for your first one. It's, if you're, if you're renting the place, it's probably security deposit up front. So you need to account for that. It's it's all those things that get you to the place where you, you can, can actually list, list it. It's a somebody. photographer. Mm -hmm. It may be a designer. It should be a designer, actually. So it, it there's there's all these costs that you occur before anyone shows up. So the place is rentable as a short term rental. Right. So it's and, all those things. And what we tell people that we that we coach is to budget at least $25 a square foot. I, w I wouldn't say any more than that. No, that well, that's a measure. It's really don't go over that amount. Right. So don't go over $25 a square foot because you're you're you should be hiring a designer and that designer is going to charge you around you should budget twenty dollars a square foot for the designer, and so the the other but that includes the stuff they're buying too. Right? Yes, that includes it the includes furniture. the furniture. In, yeah, yeah, it, and it should include some designers have have the have you purchased the TVs yourself separate from that? Some designers will purchase the TVs for you, but th that should cover everything as far as furnishings and and design go right but the other five dollars a square foot that's what you're going to use for your your supplies such as k cups and toilet paper and paper towels and sponges and dishwasher pods and dish detergent and and everything else because there's not just the unit that you have to think about, there's also your supply closet that you have to think about. Yeah, too. and your linens. I want to say we spent a lot on Oh linens. my gosh, linens. Well, you need four sets for bed. We've talked yeah, about we've that talked and about everything. That. But the, right. the, that's linens is a huge I was expense. about to say expense, expensive, but linens. that's where your other five dollars goes. Yes. It's let's let's budget for that. And hopefully you have some I think you should. If you if you budget twenty five dollars a square foot you should have some left over, but I would rather you over budget yeah. and come under budget For than sure. getting us get in a situation where I I don't have enough money to complete sure. it. Sure, yeah, For right. Sure. Or I now I have to cut corners. 
right. like not hire a professional photographer right. because I don't have the three hundred dollars to pay that person. Right. Right. Totally. So I, that that twenty five dollars really is a top end. It's a don't go over that per square foot. Rather than a go spend twenty five dollars a square foot, of course, cut costs. We're all entrepreneurs. We should be cutting costs, but do not cut corners. Ooh, those two things are different. So those things that Wendy mentioned, like hiring a designer, getting a professional photographer, you know, those types, of putting in the security system. Yeah. That's where I see personally people make mistakes because they try to save money mm -hmm. on the front end. Yeah, and for us, they're non-negotiables. And really what they're doing is they're cutting corners and not costs. Yeah. And that, that hurts you in the long run. You you lose way more. Because I know there's somebody out there saying, $20 a square foot. That seems expensive. So for a thousand square foot place, you're telling me I need 20 grand? Well, the guy, the guru over on, I'm not going to mention his name, because but I saw one of his ass day. He said it was only five grand to set up a one bedroom apartment. No way. There's no way you can do that and have it still look nice. You're right. You're right. But you can do it. Oh yeah, no doubt. There's no, there's no argument. But it's no gonna argument. look like you spent five thousand dollars. It is. Yeah. It's gonna look like it. And, and then guess you get, what? That tells your customers that I that you don't care. That I am a cheap. I'm cheap, and yep. I don't care. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. You're. And that's because the exact type of customer. It, over time, yep. that will cost you money. It will. If I could tell you anything, is don't skimp on the front end. Do not skimp. Yep. You will lose more money than you are saving. Yeah. It'll feel like you're saving a dollar, but yep. you're going to lose 10. Yep. And when you get a good photographer and bad design, like stuff you bought off of Craigslist. Or Facebook Marketplace. It's going to look like it. It's, it really is. Everybody can tell. So that that's a nugget for you. Do not skimp. So believe me when I say if you're doing this right and you're following the system that we teach, it, it, you should be spending somewhere around $20 a square foot. And you should be budgeting for 25 because I want you to have that buffer. So then when it comes out to be 22, you're not scrambling. Right. And you can thank us later. <laughs> yes. Yes. And if you're, if you're that person that says, well, I didn't, I set money for five. Great. Go for that. We'll beat you every time. Yep. <laughs> we'll beat you every time. On the long, in the long term, we'll beat you every time. And I want yep. my students to be set up for success. Yes. Amen. Right. Not to say, hey, here's the cheapest way you can do it. No. That's, that's not what we're not about. What we're we're about. like, here's the. No. And I'm all for, again, I'm all for cutting costs. I'm not for cutting corners. And that's what that ends up being, yep. is you're cutting corners. That's right. So I'll get off my soapbox in that one. Okay. So, so let's talk about how we funded our business. Yeah, so now we're said, okay, it's a thousand square feet because that was actually our first one. Yep. It was a, it's a it two. A, it was a two, two house. Yeah, smaller house. It was our first Obviously, one. it's only a thousand it's, square feet. It was, was 1,100 square feet, actually. Just about. The first one, Almost. Yeah. yeah. And, and what we did, we had good credit. So we got an American Express card. Remember, we went to Lowe's. Hardware? We did, yeah. Yeah, we went to Lowe's Hardware and got a, a Lowe's American Express card. Right, but it wasn't in our personal name. No, right? it was so in our it was, business name. It was in our business name. Yeah. Actually, you know what I did was, you probably don't even know this. What I did was I went on nerdwallet.com. Okay. And I searched for the top five business credit cards. And all I did was start at the top and I applied for the first one. And then I waited to see if we would get approved for that. And then I moved on to the next one. And Interesting. That, that's what I did. Okay. Yep. I went to Nerd Wallet. Yep. Right. So, but that's something you may not realize if you're in the, in the, in the, if you're looking at this as real estate, kind of beating that drum again, like you might not realize that, oh, there's actually business credit out there. So if I have my LLC, if I have my S Corp, even if it's new, yes, you're going, and, and you alluded to that because you said that we had good credit. They're going to qualify you based on your individual credit score, but they're going to put the credit in your business name and it's going to report to your business credit, which you should do from the very beginning. Yes. We learned that as well too. Yep. You want to be building business credit all the time. Um, 
but that's how we funded it. Like it's 20 grand. How do we come up with 20 grand? And I think it was two credit cards. Yeah, because we the first one gave us like 10, 10. and the other one gave us like 15 or something. Right, something like that, yeah. Yeah, and so that's how we Yep, that's how we did it. came up with the funds to buy the furniture and buy the security system and mm -hmm. all those other things. Yep. And there are advanced things we could, you're like, there's certain things you can't buy on credit cards. Yeah, you can. <laughs> you, you certainly can. And for a lot of you, you're probably thinking, well, credit card debt's bad though, right? Oh, debt like, is a four letter word. Well, well, especially credit card debt. Especially credit card debt. But that's because it's high interest, interest. That's an interesting mindset shift. It is. But that but is important to when you somebody. when you sign up with these cards initially the the you can get these introductory rates where they're zero percent. For like twelve or eighteen months. Twelve to eighteen months. I want to say that's what happened. And that's the cheapest yeah. money you can oh, get. Man, zero percent? Yeah. And this business generates enough cash flow to pay off that card before you incur interest yep. if you really want to. I don't know why you would, but okay. Well, you can. Sure. Well, could to save the interest. That's why you would do it. Sure. I understand that. You're going to go from zero to 25. Mm -hmm. and, but Wendy, Wendy knows that that's not actually important <laughs> is what she's saying. <laughs> but it may be in the mind of somebody that heard credit card debt. So I'm trying to help them. Okay. Right. I'm trying to encourage them. Well, that, I'm trying to say that debt is not necessarily a four letter word right and especially the, credit card debt because well there's well you always want the cheapest interest rate well that, obviously that's a no-brainer but what i'm saying is there's most people can qualify for some kind of credit card yeah now if you can't and you're credit challenged <laughs> credit challenge that's well, that's what it's called i know it's just funny if you're if you're credit challenged what would you say? If you have bad credit? Uh-huh. Okay. Maybe I'm using the PC word. I don't know. <laughs> but if you're credit challenged or you have bad credit, if you want to say it that way, and you're like, hey, I can't qualify for that, then another way to fund it is have cash. Like if you have cash in the bank, now you know that, hey, I only need 20 grand. I know that I said only to a lot of you, but there, there you that is an option. You can self-fund cash. And then you don't have the interest payment. Yep. Even better, right? True enough. Yep. And then if that doesn't work, there's there's also the the private money route. Yep. So that it's, is a skill set. I will say that's... It is indeed. That's harder, obviously, mm, than indeed. applying for a credit yes. card or going down to the bank and applying for a line of credit. Or here's another idea for you. If you have a personal residence already that has equity in it, which it should, because as, as of this recording, real estate prices are in a bubble, I believe, but they're high. So if you bought some time ago, you probably have equity. You probably could get a line of credit or something on your, your personal residence. That is a way to go. That's cheaper money. But if you have to go the private money route, which means friends, family, acquaintances, that kind of thing, that's a whole other discussion. It can be done. It's a skill set though. It's not a, I know how to write and fill out an application. <laughs> right. So I don't, I don't want to kind of get into that, but right, I just yes. want to say that is a source of funds. It, it is. And we've had quite a few students that were, that were able to, to raise private, private money. From yes. Private money lenders. They were. Yep. It was either friends, family, yep. or somebody mm -hmm. they attracted mm -hmm. to their idea or, mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. And then the, you know, you have to have the right conversations mm -hmm. and know how to structure right. those things. Right. And, mm -hmm. right. you know, it's, it's that kind of, that's why I didn't want to get into yeah. it. Right. Exactly. But it, it is, is, it is something that students have had success with yeah. as well. Yeah. It is a, a it's a whole nother long, podcast. Yes. A long, lengthy <laughs> podcast separate, by itself. Separate. Maybe a four part series. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> So, so now that we've covered all that and you know how we funded our business and you, there's some, are there any other, I can't think of any other options besides the ones that you've said. Not if you, if you're just starting out. So if you have none, if you're at zero, those are kind of your options. However, if you've been operating for a while, That's true. Yeah. your business, hopefully you have it one like a structure, like an LLC, an S corp or a corporation or something, your business has revenue. 
And because your business has revenue, now you start qualifying for other things that have nothing to do with your personal credit at all. They have to do with your business makes five to 10 grand a month, right? That, in fact, as you, as you have more units, you have way more cash flow because it's a very cash flow heavy business. And remember, they're not looking at typically your after expense number. They're looking at your top line revenue, revenue number. Right. Right. So if your payout for right. the month was 20 grand from Airbnb, let's say, so you, that's the only place you list. If you got paid 20 grand on Airbnb this month, they're now qualifying you on, oh, your business makes 20 grand a month. Right. And now you qualify for those type of products. So once you get started, once you get past the, okay, the only thing I have is a credit card, realize that if you have the, the mindset that, hey, this is a business and it's not really about the real estate, which we've talked about a lot, then now you start applying, you start, not well, you applying, of course, but qualifying for business, business credit, credit yes. and business lines of credit that are really based on what the business does. How does the business perform? And it has nothing to do with your personal credit at all at some point. And so we've been able to fund ourselves that way as well. Yes, right. You know, our but personal credit. But that's after credit. you've gotten started and, yeah. and you've gotten some, some bookings and you're starting to make money. Yeah. You know what else, you know, what else that I was just thinking about was, you know, if you pass your, your, what if you are purchasing the property and right. you already talked about that a little bit, but there's really no difference. What do you mean when you say there's really no difference? Well, in my mind, because it does cost more, right? If I buy it, I have to pay more. Yeah. But you're still, you're setting at that point. If you are purchasing the property, that's a whole separate business. It is. This, and the short-term rental business is a whole separate business. Those are two separate businesses. They really are. So what you're really saying is if you buy the property, do a good real estate deal mm -hmm. and take the short-term rental out of your mind. Take that revenue out of your mind. Make sure that the real estate deal that you are doing is a good real estate deal on its own and that it's profitable on its own. And then consider putting your short-term rental business in there and then make sure the short-term rental business own its own paying fair market rent to your real the estate business, business is profitable on its own. And that's how you actually protect yourself. That's how you protect yourself from doing a bad real estate deal because you thought if I just did the short-term rental thing, Right. But the problem is a lot of times oh, we see this so often that doesn't, it goes away or, it, or it doesn't become the thing. And now you're stuck with this bad real estate deal that you yep. have to scramble to get out of. Yep. Like you don't want that. Or you have this bad real estate deal that only works because you have this short term rental business over here that subs is subsidizing it. Right. And, and you lie to you and, and, it, and that's actually lying to yourself because it's, 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 it's forcing you to hold this bad real estate deal because you think you're making all this money over here where really half of that's going to subsidize the real estate. And now this actually becomes a unprofitable short term rental business. Because if you actually charge true market rent to this thing, then it wouldn't survive. Right. So if you, so that's a rule of thumb. If you're, if you're a short-term rental business, even if you own the property, if it could not afford to pay market rent on the property that it's in, then it's not really a profitable business. Cause it's not about how much you make. Right. It's about how much more did you make? And it's about making good decisions on each side of that equation. Right. So here's something I, I may have mentioned this before in a different episode. But here's something that I, I heard because we're in different Facebook real estate groups and somebody was actually just, you know, bemoaning the fact that one of their favorite restaurants was closing down. Oh, we did talk about this. We did? Yeah, because we talked about Olive Garden. 
No, no, that, it wasn't. It wasn't about Olive Garden oh, at all. Okay. That, that was a whole different conversation. Oh, we're talking was it? About. Okay. Yeah, this one was. I don't remember this one though. This one was there. It was that their favorite restaurant was closing down. And I believe it was in Noda area, which is the Arts District of Charlotte, right? Because it's a local real estate group. And what they were saying was, and they posted like the news article to it, and the the news article was all about this restaurant had to close down because their landlord raised their rent and they couldn't afford to be there anymore. And so they just decided to close the restaurant down because they weren't going to be able to be profitable with the rent increase. And as a point of you know fact, somebody else commented on it in that thread, who's another real estate investor in the area that I respect. And he said, well, you know, actually the rent increases is, is in line with current market rents you know what they were paying before was from 10 years ago and there's just never been raised and that's actually what the piece of real estate's worth so it's not like they're gouging them they're just bringing it up to what it's what actual market rent like current, is current market rent yeah and then a little bit you know there are other comments and a little bit later another person that i'm a you know acquaintance with in the real estate investing world but she happens to be a licensed realtor she chimed in and said this is why I always encourage my business owners, like a restaurant business owner, to actually buy the property that they're operating their restaurant in. Interesting. So that that can't happen. <laughs> well, she, she needs to listen to the podcast. Right. But that does make logical sense. Like, it's not a, if you saw that comment, Normally, like I didn't see anybody else protest what she said. Right, but they don't understand that there's two separate businesses. Yes, it, it, so that's the whole point. Like the the restaurant actually isn't profitable. That's actually the point. Right. If they own the real estate, they should be yes. charging. They're going to be charging market rent regardless of who's renting it. Not my point. What I'm saying is what she was saying was if that restaurant has bought that building, then they would still be in operation today. Mm, yeah. But that restaurant would be actually be a lie. Yes. Because they're not considering Cause, because what, what they, they could have been making. Like not considering what they could be renting that space for. Yes. And right. right. And when you consider that and realize that that's actually an opportunity cost. Oh. of running the restaurant in that building, mm -hmm. you're foregoing market rent. Mm -hmm. And it can suck you into thinking, oh, I Making actually money. have a profitable, mm -hmm. profitable business. Right. Right. When you don't. Right. And what you, what you actually do is have a profitable business at the expense of a bad real estate deal. Ooh. So where you're making it over here, you're losing it over here, mm -hmm. and you don't do the math in your head to say, oh, that's actually a, a negative situation. Right. But how would you know that if they weren't separate? That's why we advocate separating. Right. And, mm -hmm. it's, and it's very obvious when you're in the rental arbitrage model because you're only on one side of the equation. Mm -hmm. So right. it's very clear to us whether Queen City Suites is profitable. Right. Sure. But even if we own the building, it would be very clear to us, is Queen City Suites profitable? Because, because Queen City Suites doesn't own any real estate. Right. But even if we own the underlying real estate, that's the whole point. Right. There's another separate business that actually owns the real estate. Yeah. And actually, it, in the places that we're in today, I, I did the math. It would not make sense yeah, for us to buy them. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. It wouldn't because the, the rent that we pay is would not support the purchase price right fifteen hundred dollars in rent a month does not support a three hundred fifty dollar thousand dollar purchase well price. that is the market right now so right so you got to consider that so it would actually be to our detriment to purchase the property to purchase the property even if the mortgage payment was less than rent and that's hard that's hard to wrap your mind around is it not yeah for sure because, but it's because you're only looking at it as a monolith, this single thing, yeah. instead of realizing that, oh, it's actually a real estate deal and it's actually a business separate from that. And that's why I like using the restaurant thing because that, it, for some reason in our heads, that makes it clearer to understand 
that, hey, maybe I don't need to own the building that my restaurant's in. In fact, most restaurants don't. Right. Sure. So. Okay. That, that's what I have to say about the real estate side. Okay. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Or? No. Okay. Well, we hope we ha you found some value in this episode. If so, click that like and subscribe button, and we will see you next time. On to the next. On to the next.